This UCSD TV program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest programs. I killed this bad person to save my love and for the politic freedom of love, freedom of the soul, of religion. And I kill this this person that for. Mm. That's good. Do you want to watch? Yeah. yeah but it's really Camilo. Tosca. Finalmente. <laughs> Mia. Yeah, that looks good. good. Yeah. That looks good. Like that, yeah, you did. I know. Let's, yes. Let's let's. I felt it. Tosca. Finalmente Mia. <laughs> got her close. You can't get that knife in there. Yeah. <laughs> My life is in the rehearsal hall and some few days on stage and I do the lighting. You need to move out of the way. The first time we shoot someone, we're going to shoot Kyle. Okay? This is the, that's, if you're my assistant, this is one of the things that has to, goes with the job. My first job. The first thing and the most important thing I have to do is build an ensemble. I have to create an atmosphere of laughter, fun, trust, experimentation, um, questioning if, they, if people question. I, there's no one single right way to do anything. My staging is this. If you find yourself being run over by a liturgical procession, get out of the way. <laughs> and you can always come down here and mill about. Just don't get run over by a procession. And as long as you end up where you end up, where you need to end up, that will be awesome. Because you all know where you're coming from and you all know where you're going to end up. So I trust you, play it by ear, and if there's a huge crash, then we'll just laugh and fix it, okay? And for me, once the singers begin to trust one another and feel comfortable with one another, magic happens. Well, it looks really good when she's, when she's trying to come to you yeah. and you're pushing her yeah. away. Yeah. So even when she comes again, push her away again. Cool, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can it not be during the... Um, when she yeah, yeah. speaks about exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's why I exactly. Exactly, exactly. Okay. I just start from scratch and say, okay, in this particular situation, the set is, exists and we're, uh, it was borrowed from another company. And I took a look at the set and thought, okay, here we go. The hardest part of figuring out how to stage a scene would be, it's for me, usually setting the furniture in a, in a scene with furniture, um, because that determines everything else. And then I look at it as a human being walking on stage. I'm Angelotti, who am I, what's happening? I'm Tosca, she has millions of emotions. The sacristan, a huge emotional scale over each of his scenes. And I look at them each as fully developed human beings and I play each part. And for some reason I end up without cliches because I'm starting from scratch. When someone says that Tosca is a melodrama, all I think of is that someone's forearm is thrown to their foreheads and everyone has big eyes and is at the extreme of their emotions. Where in fact, in this opera, the whole opera is composed of intimate conversations between usually just two people. There's only one moment when the, all three characters are on stage and it's a very short period in act two. The most important thing is for every button in the cast to feel confident and able to feel good going out there, trusting me that I'll make them look good. If they don't look good, I'll tell them, and I'll fix something, but it's, and I'll make sure that the story is beautifully told. The singers come as complete human beings with ideas, with questions, and you know, you, you see what each one, you know, brings. The woman playing Tosca, Alexia is, is, is her emotional range is uh, fantastic. And I can't wait to see what she does when she finally is with orchestra.
So Tosca is uh, a beautiful young woman, first of all, and uh, then she's also a famous opera singer. This makes the, the personage very familiar to me. <laughs> and uh, um, she's a woman f full with passion for everything, for life, love, art, religion. Everything is uh, always with a big passion, what is uh, with Tosca to have to, with Tosca to do. She's uh, uh, really fall in love with uh, our tenor, the uh, Cavaradossi, uh, Mario, and uh, then she's a jealous woman when she thinks that uh, Mario uh, maybe has an affair with another woman. And the second act is uh, the drama, the woman drama. must kill for love and then in the last act uh, she is the woman that uh, she die for love like very, very much, naturally, the Visi d'arte. Also the moment that uh, I kill Scarpia. This is really great. <laughs> driving force behind the story. If he wasn't pursuing Cavaradossi and Tosca and Angelotti, the story wouldn't happen. Oh, you're a
he doesn't see himself as evil. He sees himself as, it seems strange, but he would see himself as the hand of God, helping rid the, the nation of these rebels and also these political uh, uh, anarchists is how he would view them. Uh, he's doing the queen's work. The queen is the representative of God on, on earth. And in a strange way, he feels much more connected to God, which it justifies the end of the first act where he says, Tosca, you make me forget God and allows himself that indulgence. To, to feel what he feels for Tosca. after Ancelotti and then he he sees that he could take a little something for himself by giving himself a little bit of dessert one would say with Tosca at that point he's enjoying himself and he says to her that for him it's so much better if she hates him <laughs> It's a question of making her detest him, which is exactly what he wants in his sexual sadism. He's such an intelligent man, such a well-educated man. He quotes Shakespeare uh, in the first act that you would never imagine that someone so educated could be so cruel. It's a real dichotomy and there are so many possibilities within that realm to explore who this, who this person is. time is uh, with uh, the new partners and uh, with the new in a new company new theater is like you live love let's say again but is uh, like another kind of being loved but it's the same thing is love but with the new partner is uh, a new situation you find uh, maybe new feelings new movements you always have something to learn Alexia, non ritardare prima, stai a tempo prima. Cavaradossi is a painter and he is also the lover of Tosca. Tosca and Cavaradossi's uh, love story is, it's a sort of, it's, it's a, um, thrown against the backdrop of an historical event of, of Napoleon fighting the Austrians in Italy at the beginning of the 19th century. He's not a, an heroic uh, revolutionary figure himself. He just finds himself washed up in this, in this situation. So he has to walk this very, very um, narrow tightrope, if you like. On top of that, you have Tosca thrown into the mix as um, something Scarpia very much wants to possess. Ah! 
None of the characters are in a situation where everything going on around them doesn't impact on their lives. And Cavaradossi and, and uh, Tosca and Scarpia, they're collateral damage in this big, big other historic picture that is going on. So when it comes to the last act, uh, when the scene where he sings El Luce Vanestelle, people see this aria as a, as a, as a love song. Um, it's, it's not really a love song to Tosca. It's a love song to life. What he's talking about is that the love of, of life is going to be taken away from him. And at that moment, he's never, ever been so much uh, wanting to live. So it raises the whole question at the end of the opera when she does come in with the, with the paper, knowing that Scarpia cannot be trusted. Is he really believing that he's going to escape with her? Or is he resigned to the fact that he is going, this is it, he is going to die, and what all he can do now is to try and make that a bit easier for her? The music is incredible, it's very complex. There are moments in which you know, the orchestra is playing and bells are chiming both close and far away and cantatas from the backstage of the whole chorus singing. Music is complex but incredibly simple. In other words, it's so it's rich, but you'll understand the story, you'll follow it so easily. You don't need surtitles, um, but if you read them, great, but you won't need them.
people usually play the the, the beautiful idealist idealized uh, love story that they they they're going to go away with each other across the sea and actually it's a bit more sophisticated and a bit more complicated than that. Puccini loved the drama as well as the music. He was a huge fan of silent movies and when he saw that that you could actually depict emotional life with music and not words. I think he was he was spurred on and and he he had a unique vision for what opera could be. Joining verismo and and leitmotif and understanding of emotional journeys that these these characters were taking. Being able to describe that musically and then you have the words along with it, it it's crystal clear and uh, it's almost a letter from Puccini. to share how many people it takes to build an opera. It's all about collaboration and I'm going to list the people that it took to put on this wonderful opera tonight. Starting with the artists, Maestro Massimo Zanetti, conductor, and 64 members of the San Diego Symphony in the Pit, two members of the On Stage Fonda, and two librarians and a personal manager. Leslie Koenig, director, and eight principal artists, Alexia Folgeridou, Gwyn Hughes-Jones, Greer Grimsley, Christopher Emmerter, Joel Sorensen, Scott Sikon, Johnny Bankins, and Bridget Hogan. <laughs> Charles Prestonari, chorus master, Dottie Randall, rehearsal pianist, Emanuela Patroncini, language coach, and 38 members of the San Diego Opera Chorus, and a children's chorus of 16 members with one studio teacher. <laughs> Bob Bornchauger and Jesse Bettencourt, super captains, and 29 supernumeraries. <laughs> At the production table, Gary Martyr, lighting designer, Jason Bieber, assistant lighting designer, Ron Allen, production director, and Joan Foster, associate production director. In the lighting booth, Joanne Stewart, light board operator. In the clouds, two follow spot operators. And the Digitex crew take care of the cert titles above us, Charles Arthur, Franklin Gray, and Marion Porter. Behind the scenes, John David Peters, production carpenter, and an additional crew of 24 stagehands consisting of carpenters, electricians, prop men, fly men, and sound technicians.
Steve Bryant, wig and makeup designer and a wig and makeup crew of 12. Missy West, wardrobe supervisor and a wardrobe crew of 23, consisting of dressers, stitchers, craftsmen, and launderers. Carrie Masick, production stage manager. Kyle Lang, assistant director. Nikki Hyde and Sandy Zamora, assistant stage managers, and Jonathan Moore, intern. Now, not included, so far we're up to 244 people, and not included in that 244 is an additional 25 staff members of the San Diego Opera, and additional stagehands who loaded in and set up the scenery, the crew at the Scenic Studio, and 16 stitchers and crew of the San Diego Opera Costume Shop, who made all the alterations on the costumes. All of them had a part in making this happen. Please join me in giving them a great big round of applause.